Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're talking about the DJI Sendence remote controller, specifically when used with the Inspire 2. Now I've had this remote pretty much from day one and I actually did a video on this when it was just coming out of beta. However, quite a lot has changed since then, so I thought I would do an updated video giving you guys an overview of this functionality, telling you its plus points, as well as give you some information on some of the things that don't really work so well on it. So you're able to make the decision for yourself do you need this remote controller over having the standard remote controller that comes with the Inspire 2? Because it isn't a cheap upgrade. It's $1,000 or £1,000, and it is something that some people say is fantastic, and some people have said, well, I'm not so sure about. So in this video, we're going to have a look at it, give you guys as much information as I possibly can, and at the end, I'm going to give you my thoughts on this remote controller, having used it pretty much since day one with the Inspire 2. Okay, so just to give you an overview of this remote before we look at it in some more details. The Sendence is a multifunction remote controller designed to be used with the Inspire 2 and the original M200. It has a total of 30 buttons, of which 14 are programmable. Now, if you compare that to the original remote, you actually only have two programmable buttons on that one. So it does give you a lot more options. Just because there's only 14 of the 30 which are programmable, that doesn't mean the others aren't useful either, because they are. You've got some fixed camera buttons, you've got shutter, and a lot of other options as well. And there's also some nice additional gimbal controls over the remote too, which we'll come on to a little bit later. Now, it comes out the factory with the Crystal Sky bracket fitted as standard. So if you've got a Crystal Sky, it really is designed to be used in this package. However, you can still use it with a normal tablet or phone as well. You simply would have to buy the device holder that they make separately, or I actually made a 3D printed bracket, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, which allows you to use the normal device holder that came with that one. Um, looking over the remote, it's got all the normal stuff. So you've got your two normal gimbals, you've got a display in the center, which is for information only you've got a whole host of controls on the front and back as well couple of things on this remote controller that are massively beneficial compared to the original the first one is that it has a removable battery that is located on the bottom of the remote controller under the antenna now this is the same battery that dji use on the crystal sky so whilst you can charge the battery in the remote there is a charge port on the side there you can swap the battery out at any time so that means if you are doing a day's filming you don't have to worry about about charging the battery halfway through the day as long as you've got multiple packs you can simply press the button release the battery and it will come out and as I've said it's exactly the same battery as DJI use on the Crystal Sky you can then pop a new one in lock it in place and it's as straightforward as that now as I mentioned you can charge that battery in the hub or you can charge it via the port on the side of the remote controller as well one of the other nice features with the Sendence is that it actually has the option of two different aerials they include two omnidirectional stick antennas but they also include this directional patch antenna now you'll see that there's a bracket here this is one that i have made myself that allows me to take it on and off quickly because they do actually want you to screw it in place however you can remove it and use the omnidirectional stick antennas if you want now the patch antenna actually does help get better signal. However, it is very directional. And I have done a specific video on that antenna actually demonstrating it in use. I can say it definitely makes a difference as long as you've got line of sight with the aircraft and you keep it within a very tight range in front of the antenna. But the big benefit of the patch antenna, especially if you're going to use it in broadcast, is it really does help in the 1080p live feed mode. It is night and day difference between using the patch and using the omnidirectional sticks but you do have the option of both and most of the packages i believe do come with this antenna or that one as well um Overall, as I've said, the Sendence costs a total of about a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds. So it isn't the cheapest remote in the world. However, because of the options on it, you've got to decide if those options are actually a benefit to you or not. Next, let's take a closer look over the remote controller itself. 
itself. You have your usual two gimbals on your left and right. Now these are the same as pretty much all of the DJI gimbals, very high quality, not really seen anyone with any problems with these whatsoever. In the center, you have your crystal sky mount as well. Now over the send dense, there's a total of 30 buttons of which 14 are programmable. That does mean that there are 16 fixed function buttons and the fixed function ones on the front are as follows. You have your power button, your pause button, your return to home and your menu button. The menu brings up the settings for the sendents in the Crystal Sky monitor. It doesn't actually bring them up on the display. The display is purely informational, but when you press that, it actually brings the settings up on the screen and I'll show you that a little bit after. You then have four fixed function camera buttons down the left hand side. Now these are to control your aperture, your shutter, your ISO and your EV. So depending on what mode your camera is in, you are able to control those settings via these buttons. And to do it, you simply press and hold the one you want, so E for EV, and then you would turn the jog dial over here on the left hand side. That is pretty much all that the jog dial is doing at this moment in time. It's not used for anything else other than the controlling these functions over here. Then on the top left and right corner you have a pair of programmable buttons and you have another pair of programmable buttons down here in the bottom right. And these can be set to any number of options within the DJI GO 4 app. Something to be aware of, you don't have the option to set every feature on the remote. It is limited by what DJI have said you can do within the Go app. Also worth noting that there are some other functions that you can do on some remote buttons, but not on others. And we'll look at them a little bit more in detail shortly. In the center here, you will notice that there is a control knob and this is a focus control. The only option that it can be mapped to is focus and it's an infinite potential and it means you're able to control the focus when you're in manual focus mode on a lens on the X5S for instance. Moving to the top right hand corner of the remote controller you can see another three fixed function buttons. These are focus, AF on and off as well as the record shutter button. You then have your gimbal control located below and this allows you to control either the pan or the pitch of the gimbal. There's one on either corner and you can set which one you want it to do. However, it is only those two functions it can do. It's a self-centering spring loaded control and it is quite nice actually. I'd like a little bit more throw on it but overall it does get the job done very, very nicely. Then on the right hand side, and you've got another one on the left, is a fixed slider that allows you to slide it back and forth. Now when Syndense was originally released for the Inspire, these were actually disabled and they were mainly designed for the M200. However, they are now active and they allow you to program it to the rates on the remote controller. And it's actually one of my favorite functions on this remote. And it means you're able to have it in the full front mode and it will allow you to have say full speed forward and then if you drag it right back it will drag all of the rates back of the sticks and that means then that if you push full forward the aircraft will only move slowly. Now whilst yes there are other flight modes you can do that stuff in it's a real nice and easy way of being able to control the output of the sticks and you can do it for forward back, left, right, as well as your uh, or altitude as well. So it, it is a very, very nice control. Looking at the left hand side at the top, you have an additional two programmable buttons, your flight mode switch, which gives you your, your normal P mode, your sport mode and your ATTI. You have your left wheel, as I mentioned earlier, which controls your gimbal exactly the same as the one on the right and then you have your other slider located down here as well. Moving to the back of the remote controller you can see you have your C1 and C2 buttons and there are an additional C3 and C4 buttons just located up here on the backs of these little triggers and they are very small buttons that you can press but again all four of these are programmable within the app. Looking at the rest of the back of the remote controller you can see in the center there is usually a pad over here here, but on mine it's missing. Um, this actually hides the adjustments for the gimbals so you can actually control the gimbal tension springs as well on the Sendence and to do this normally you'd have to remove the pad but mine didn't have one on in the first place so I didn't actually need to do it. Below that you've then got two mounting posts for, for, for mounting it to a kit and then below is one of the big features with the Sendence as I mentioned at the start is the removable battery. To take it out it's simply press slide back 
and it lifts out just like that. And as I mentioned earlier, it is the same battery as you get with the Crystal Sky monitor. But if you've got a Crystal Sky as well, you can carry a few, pop it in, slide and lock, and you're ready to go again. Moving to the back of the RC is where you have all the I.O. ports and you have a SDI, a micro USB, which really isn't used at the moment. You have your canvas port, which is used for the additional GPS or if you're using the patch antenna, as I have connected on this one. You have a full size HDMI output, which is really nice. You're not having to mess around with the small ones. You've got a full one, which will get you pretty much connected to anything you need to between that and HDMI, especially if you're doing broadcast. And then you've got your full size USB A port on the side here. And again, if you do want to use it with a device holder, so you can use a tablet, you just use that port there as you usually would. Located at the top is your two antenna connectors and these are the removable ones so you can switch between the omnidirectional sticks or the patch antenna as I've got connected here. Now to do that you would simply unscrew, give it a tug and it reveals the connector below. Now something I will say on these is they are a little bit delicate so do be aware of that if you are changing the antennas over but to refit you simply place it over the top until it latches in place. It is keyed so do be aware of that and then screw the nut up nice and tight and it's as simple as that. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the Crystal Sky connected to the Sendents and it's all turned on. And the reason it's on is we're going to show you guys the menus. And the thing to note is you won't actually see every setting unless your aircraft is turned on and connected. Now, you can see that the display is on at the bottom as well. And this is actually purely informational. You can't do any settings change via this, but it does give you quite a lot of nice flight information. Looking at the display, you've got your remote controller battery level in the top left corner. You then got your aircraft battery level, the remote controller signal and the GPS from the aircraft. You've then got the master and slave which tells you what mode this is actually in and then it says it's got the stick mode as well so it shows if you're in mode one or mode two. You've then got the distance from the home point and the current height of the aircraft as well as the horizontal speed in meters a second and the vertical speed in meters a second as well. The section at the bottom is the informational bit which says the patch antenna is connected or not. So if you're using the omnidirectional sticks, that will just be blank. But when you are using the patch, it should come up and show that message so you know it is connected and working properly. So taking a closer look at the settings on the Sendents. Now we've got the screen up and as you can see, it shows us the buttons we can and can't change. So all of the ones down here, which are the camera ones, which are fixed, EV, shutter, aperture, ISO are all greyed out. The power menu, return to home is greyed out as well. You can see that the focus control is lit up. And whilst I said you can't actually change the function on that, what you can do though is disable it. So if you click on focus, you have the option of setting it to either focus or nothing at all. But that is the only option that you've got for that one. Um, you can then see that the six buttons are showing as programmable on the front, which is two, two and two. And if I switch to the back, you can then see we've got the option to program the C buttons, the four Cs, and the ones on the top right hand corner. Now, all of these buttons have the same options available to them, and they are limited within what DJI have allowed you to do. And they are as follows. If you go into the settings for any of them, you've got the top option, which is undefined, which means it is disabled. You then have camera, and under camera settings, you've got the option to bring up camera settings, camera metering, AF lock, AE lock, sorry, exposure lock, uh, playback, center autofocus, autofocus, manual focus, peak focus, focus peaking, histogram, white balance, and turn on the overexposure warning. If you then go to gimbal, you have the option for get gimbal control. So this is if you're using dual ops, it'll grab it back from the slave. Uh, gimbal your master recenter, follow spotlight mode, center FPV gimbal, and gimbal recenter. Moving under flight control, you then have the option to turn on and off the front LEDs, turn on and off quick spin, radar chart, raise and lower the landing gear and the landing gear switch. Something to be aware of with these two. Raise and lower landing gear simply puts the landing gear up and down. Landing gear switch turns on and off the option for it to automatically do it when you get within about 1.2 meters of the ground. So don't get those two mixed up. And those two will not show unless you have got your aircraft turned on and connected. Under the app, you've got the option to switch map and live view, clear flight route, show battery info, close tips, check warnings, show grid lines, go to full screen or enable, disable color waveform. 
under advanced you've got composition mode on and off vps which is the downward sensors on and off the front vision sensors which is your obstacle avoidance or pause the obstacle avoidance for a specific task then finally under other you've got the option of expand live view and switch 2.4 to 5 gig on the radio mode so they are all of the options that you have available to you when using the normal buttons on the remote as i've said they are within the limits of what dji have allowed now there are four other controls that have some specific tasks on the back and these are the two sliders on each side and the two gimbal controls if the sliders have the options of controlling pitch roll max speed so it's a kind of a rate control so rather than full stick going full forward it will actually drag that back you've got the option to set it to your max speed or throttle max speed and again these can be set for the left or right slider on the remote controller then you've got the gimbal your adjustments on the top and again these two can be swapped around they can't be changed to anything else but you can set the left one to gimbal pitch or gimbal your and the right one to gimbal pitch or gimbal your depending on your preference switching back and forth to the front you can see it's nice and easy to switch between the controls and it shows you what they do looking over the rest of the options on the front um what we have at the top here is the option to set multiple profiles so you can set profiles depending on what you want to do so you've got mad front and mad back and that is the two profiles that i've currently got in action you've then got the settings menu in the middle and this allows you to save your profiles however there is something i need to mention here it doesn't really work properly with crystal sky in my experience it works absolutely fine with ios you can save as many profiles as you want however on crystal sky it just doesn't work for me no matter what i do it doesn't work so it is something to be aware of if you are using ios it does mean that you can easily back up all of your settings and i would suggest even if you are using crystal sky connect an ios device to it back the settings up so if at least if it ever loses them you can get them back but you've got the options here of saving exporting uh adding new settings depending on what you want to do and then you've got the three mode options at the top which is your single mode if you're only ever using it in a single mode your master and your slave and again these aren't the settings to change the remote controller into master and slave but they're the settings of the button combinations when you're using it in master or slave settings so you can actually have three entirely separate quick selects of button combinations depending on what function you've got the remote controller doing at the time finally in the top right hand corner you've got the option to reset all of the settings and that will clear it all back to factory as i mentioned at the start a lot of these settings won't be available unless you do have your aircraft on and connected as well um as i did say you don't have the option for every function and you are limited to what you can do within the dji app however there is still a very nice amount of functionality from within the syndense remote controller settings Something else I just wanted to show you guys is about the options on the outputs for the SDI and HDMI connection. To get to these, you go into your settings, down to HD, and at the bottom here, you've got the option to turn on and off HDMI SDI output. You've got the choice to choose the output port, so HDMI SDI. You can then set it to show either the camera display output, picture and picture output, or FPV display. You've then also got all of the settings as well. So to show from 1080p 24 all the way down to 720p 60, and you have pretty much every option you would want, both progressive and interlaced as well, especially handy if you are using it in a broadcast situation. You then got the OSD settings, which allows you to either show or don't show the OSD over the top of the output and then you've got the picture and picture options which allows you to set the position of the picture and picture when you're doing that as well so one of the big benefits especially if you're going to use it in a broadcast situation is you do have a lot of outputs and it is a nice clean output as well it means that you're just getting the camera feed rather than having a mirror image like you do on the crystal sky and if you are using it with the crystal sky you also have your hdmi output on that as well and you could literally connect to multiple devices and multiple screens too Okay, so before I uh, give you my thoughts on the Sendence, um, just some little things I want to make you aware of. 
problems wise overall the remote appears to be very very reliable not seeing too many problems the ones i have seen are as follows uh, the saving to the crystal sky doesn't work as i mentioned earlier for the user profiles it's a bit of a pain you can save to ios but not crystal sky it's a bit of a funny one some people report and i have had this a number of times myself that when they turn the remote on it's just randomly beeping the only way you can get rid of it is turn it off and turn it back on again and it's absolutely fine doesn't do it every time no one's really figured out what the cause is i think it's to do with the dead band on the sticks so what i tend to do is flick all the sticks and the levers and then turn it off and turn it on and it goes away but it is something to be aware of it's a funky little thing but it really doesn't affect anything once you turn it off and turn it on again um other than that, the only other thing I've really seen is the odd person has broke the antenna port, so do be careful with them. If you are swapping the antennas, they are quite delicate. Don't be rough with those connections. Make sure you fully unscrewed it, pull it out gently, because if it breaks, there aren't accessories or options available, and you've got to send it into DJI. I have seen a few people break the mounts for the sticks inside, and the only way I can see that happening is force on the top. I've not seen anyone have it just happen, and I think that would happen on any of the remote controllers, probably dropped. Um, so, should you buy the Sendent for the Inspire 2 over, say, having the standard remote controller. As I've said, it's got a total of 30 buttons, of which 14 are programmable. The other 16 are fixed function, but they are very handy. You have a removable battery, which allows you to use it all day long with swapping packs exactly the same ones as the Crystal Sky. It isn't cheap, $1,000, $1,000 pounds. However, having used it for 12 months, I actually think it is a no-brainer and one of my favorite accessories DJI have ever made. It isn't perfect. I wish there was a lot more programmable options. I wish we had the option to actually set the gimbal controls to the side sliders as well, to be able to have some automated movement of the gimbal like you can on the Unique H. However, even with some of the limited functionality within the settings and the options you have within the buttons, what you do have absolutely makes it worth it. It's as simple as that. One downside and one thing I wish they had done is put a dedicated landing gear control on as well, just like on the standard remote controller because there isn't a dedicated one and you've got to use up one of your buttons. They should have just put the same thing you have on that on this in my opinion as well. Um, if you want to buy the Sendence, there's a link to it in the description of this video. There's a link to the Crystal Sky, the Inspire 2 as well. If you want to support the channel, please do use them. It's only by you guys doing that can I keep buying stuff and making videos and showing you stuff like this. Um, that's pretty much it. If you're looking for it, in my opinion, go for it. It is a lot of money, but it is worth it. That's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will do another video again soon. And that is it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, please do check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. We do have over 150 of them. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. By clicking that button in the bottom right-hand corner of the video, you'll get updates. And please do check out the links in the description if you're going to buy any products. That's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll do another video again soon.